If we're asked to find all the zeros of a polynomial, we need to take our polynomial and try to reduce it down to quadratic form. So using a given factor, a root, an x-intercept, or a zero, we would want to reduce the polynomial, like I said, to quadratic form, using long division to do that. And then you want to factor, if it's possible, or use quadratic formula to finish solving for your other roots. Notice I put a note in red down here. This is very important to remember. The degree of a polynomial matches how many roots or zeros it has. So for instance, if you have a degree of four, but you look at your graph and there's only two real solutions, that means there are two that are complex that you would have to use quadratic formula to figure out or completing the square would work as well. So let's look at an example of this. I have already worked some out because I didn't want to take your time to work out something we've already talked about. So find all the zeros of f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2, given that one zero is x equals 1. So if they've given you a zero, you can write that as a factor. Remember when we worked on factoring, if x equals 1, the factor it would come from is x minus 1. So you use that factor to do long division to reduce this polynomial to quadratic form. So that ends up being my quotient. I bring that over though, I have the remainder of zero, because if they've told you that's a zero, it's a factor, they match, they go together. X equals one goes with X minus one. It should have no remainder, because you've been told that that does work out. It's a factor, it goes with the factor theorem. So you take your quadratic that's left, and you bring it over to another piece of your paper, because there's not a lot of room right there. And you would see if you could factor it, because factoring is definitely the quickest and simplest way to finish solving for your other zeros. So this one did factor into x plus two and x plus one, because they multiply to give me two, and they add up to give me three, like we talked about with factoring. You can set each factor equal to zero, and you can easily solve to get your other two roots, because you were given one of them. And notice I added this note here. The degree was three in our original function, and so we should end up with three roots or zeros by the time we're finished, and we did. X was equal to negative two, X is equal to negative one, and we were given X equals one, so don't forget the one that you were given. And I drew a graph, because I want you to know that those roots go directly onto the graph. They're all real roots, none of them are complex. So they would be your X-intercepts, negative two, negative one, and one. This is an odd degree function, and it's a positive in the front, in the leading coefficient. So it would be down and then up. So you could get a rough sketch of your graph knowing all of these things. It's odd degree, positive, and I have three roots, and I know what they are. So I can do a pretty good sketch of my graph just knowing those things. Let's look at one more example. Okay, for this example, it says find all the zeros of this function, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10x minus 8, given that one of its factors is x minus 4. So they might already give you it as a factor. So we put it over here and use long division. Again, this is to reduce your polynomial to quadratic form, which is your quotient. So you reduced it using long division. You take your quadratic form and you see, can I factor this? So there is no number, set of numbers, that will multiply to give you two and add up to be negative two. So I put that, it won't factor. So we would have to use the quadratic formula. So I wrote that here in case you wanna add it to this example. So I found A, B, and C. I found the discriminant was B squared minus four AC. And I simplified to get negative four. And then I plugged it back into the formula. So we get two plus or minus the square root of negative four over two times a, which was two times one is two. So then you can clean it, you keep simplifying like we do with quadratic formula. So the square root of negative four gave me plus or minus two i, but then the twos could be reduced. So I end up with my final roots being x equals one plus or minus i, and don't forget that you're given four. And remember that factor x minus four goes with the zero or the root x equals four. So keep that in mind, you change the sign from your factor to your root.
Then I also made another note here on this example. The degree was three to start with in our original polynomial. So we know starting out we're looking for three roots or three zeros. We have them. We have one plus i, one minus i, and four. There are two complex roots and there's one real root. So looking at the graph of this function, it's odd degree, it's, an e it's a positive leading coefficient, odd degree, so it went down and up, but it only touched in one place, the four. The other two roots were complex, so they don't show up on our graph. But again, it allows us to have that rough sketch, just understanding at least that it only touches at four.